morning everybody before i start the show um i just want to check could you please uh, type on your chatbot can you hear me clear and then can you see three of us on your av view so could you please check uh, type on the chatbot just want to check before we start the event um can you hear us or can you hear me clear with the voice with the uh, with the sound and also can you see us um very clear on your fv view someone is typing we just want to check before we continue further ado okay i see four people yes very clear that's good without echo i'm hoping okay awesome well good uh, sorry good morning uh, singapore and also good morning to everyone anywhere because we love this technology we can um get it on together i'm hoping that there is someone um who is indonesia maybe or there's a participant i'm pretty sure singaporeans are watching at the moment my name is mohammed malana taufik um i'm your host today at the webinar dealing with the dutch linguistically culturally and socially today we are going to have this online event because this is a part of the online education fair study in Europe. I'm hoping that you are going to the website, check um, the university in the Netherlands and also the rest of the country in the Europe. I'm not uh, by myself, but uh, this morning I have Chris Sampson as local director language one Singapore. Hi Chris, good morning. Good morning. Thank you Molly. <laughs> and also we have Fons van Osterhout as director Erasmus Training Center from Jakarta, Indonesia. Hello, Fons. Good morning. Good morning. Selamat pagi from <laughs> Selamat Indonesia. Pagi. Of course. And as I said before, my name is Mohamed Mona Taufik. You can call me Molly. I'm Education Promotion Officer from Nufik Nesa, Indonesia. This morning is really special because we are going to talk about how to deal with the Dutch linguistically, culturally, and also socially. I don't have any Dutch or Netherlands background, so Chris and also Fons will help me out to give a little bit glimpse about the Netherlands, right? And also, guys, if you have any questions to all the participants, please type on the chat bot and then after the presentation we will discuss it and also we will answer all the questions hopefully the time is sufficient for this morning without further ado chris this is your um flow so i will give you to chris and you can start the screen sharing great thank you very much molly can you see it well I see very clear dealing with the Dutch cover. There you go, Chris. It's Great. all yours. Thank you so much. Uh, as Molly said, my name is Chris Sampson. I'm the local director of Language One Singapore, and Language One delivers Dutch language and cultural classes. So, um, Dutch really is my thing, so to say. Um, when you think of the Netherlands, you think of orange and maybe clocks. But there's so much more to it. Um, let's start. First of all, I'd like to tell you something about the geographics. Uh, we talk about the Netherlands. Uh, if we talk about the Netherlands, we talk about usually the country of the Netherlands in Europe. But it's a kingdom with four countries. There's a whole Euro uh, there's a European part and a whole Caribbean part. So the islands of Aruba, Curaçao and St. Martin are three the three other countries of the netherlands and then there's three special municipalities of bonaire saba and saint eustatius uh, the netherlands is forty one thousand, a bit over forty one thousand square kilometer which basically means that we fit into russia 411 times uh, it's not that big it's the four countries the Netherlands have four, so the country of the Netherlands, I should say, has 12 provinces and those three special municipalities overseas. The capital is Amsterdam uh, in the yellow part, well, the yellow uh, province of North Holland. And the political capital, the place where our government houses, is in The Hague, in South Holland, the Red uh, province. Now, there's a bit over 70 million inhabitants, which is 411 people per square kilometer. That's quite densely populated. I think we're number 29 on the list of all countries of densely 
of the dense of the population. Uh, so far, the ge geographics. Let's get into the language. You see this lovely um, linguistic language family tree. Now, the upper branch is all about the Germanic language, and that's where Dutch um, is in. Uh, it started with so Germanic, it became West Germanic, Low Franconian, which, which is also called Old Dutch, and then there's Middle Dutch. And it's important to know that because why is the language called Dutch and not Netherlandish? That is because Middle Dutch was, they used to call Middle Dutch back then, Diet. So Dutch is the literal translation of Diet. There is also Deutsch. Now, Deutsch is German for German. So don't confuse these two. It's two different languages. Dutch is Netherlandish and Deutsch is German. Now, the Netherlands um, have other languages as well. Officially, we're even a bilingual country because in the north of Holland, and I quickly go back to Friesland, the green upper bit, Friesland has its own language, uh, Frisian, it's called. A bit over 2% of the Dutch people uh, speaks Frisian. It's taught as a subject as, at schools in Friesland, not really in the rest of the Netherlands, but it is an official language. Now, there's some acknowledged regional languages like Neder Saxis and Limburgs um, that are spoken in the east or the south. And there's many, many dialects. Don't even get into learning all these dialects because, you know, there's no point. The majority of the people speaks Dutch and um, us Dutchies don't usually speak any of the other dialects. So um, if you look at this world map, you see where Dutch is spoken in the world. Of course, it's in the kingdom of the Netherlands, the European parts that includes um, uh, Flanders, which is the northern bit of Belgium. They speak Flemish there, and Flemish is the same, really, well, basically, as Dutch. Uh, and Dutch is also spoken in the Caribbean, the, the Dutch Caribbean. And below that Caribbean part is the country of Suriname. It's a former Dutch colony, where Dutch is still spoken. Now, in Africa, it's spoken, or it, they speak Afrikaans, which is very closely affiliated to Dutch. And in Namibia and Zimbabwe, there are some Dutch speakers as well. Uh, this part of the world, in Singapore, they, well, not in Singapore, but in Malaysia and Indonesia, Bahasa has a lot of Dutch words and vice versa. So Dutch has a lot of Bahasa words. We get to that later. Um, it's because of the um, colonial past of the Netherlands. So I think the elderly uh, in, in Indonesia and Malaysia, they might still speak some Dutch. The stripy bits of the world is where a lot of, the, a lot of Dutch people uh, migrated to around 1900 and later after the Second World War to um, find their luck, really. Right, Molly, can I ask you a question? Sure thing. <clears throat> Go Have ahead. Have you got any idea how many people speak Dutch worldwide? I would say plenty. Because as you <laughs> said before, I mean, um, we do have similar or the same words. So yeah, we can count like a lot of um, people can speak Dutch, I would say. Yeah, I think so too. It's actually about 24 million Dutch speakers. Well, if you look at 7 billion, I think 24 is still a decent number. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Who knew? Well, this is a blank slide, but there's more to come. Uh, because you, maybe newcomers to the Netherlands, uh, should know a couple of things about the Dutch language. And there's many things to tell. So this is just a few. We've picked a few. Um, in Dutch, there's a lot, like in any language, I should say, uh, there's a lot of proverbs, verbs, of sayings, of figurative language. Now, the Dutch uh, think, and they do, I think, but <laughs> they, the Dutch speak English quite well. 
um, but I also like to translate literally to English. Like this lovely saying, make that the cat wise. Molly, any idea what it means? Okay, if I can guess literally, I would say do not make a fool with the cats. Do <laughs> yeah. yes, but it's as it's figurative language, it's not literally. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that later. Maybe people can type in the comments. Maybe they have an idea, and then we can get to it too. Uh, at yes, the end. I will invite them all. All right. Thanks. Uh, so there's a lot of proverbs in Dutch language, and you should know it because if they talk in a figurative way, uh, you probably don't have a clue what they're talking about. If they're talking about looking a horse into his mouth or pulling a cow out of the ditch, uh, it's all figurative. We don't really look horses into their mouths or pull horses out of the ditch, unless maybe we're farmers. Um, the second one, another funny, peculiar thing I should say about Dutch is the use of diminutives, verkleinwoorden, we call them in Dutch. Now, this lovely Dutch cup, you know, it's got a mail, it's got the old houses from Amsterdam. This cup, it's not a small cup, but we should, we would still say, uh, come on, let's have a little cup, a kopje, coffee. Another thing, uh, like three examples, ga je mee een biertje drinken? Biertje is a small beer. Well, you know, if you go off your uh, lessons at the university and you go drink a beer, biertje with your friends, it usually isn't a small one. Um, we say, oh, what a cute, childy, like a little child. And also, I'll make a little list. It doesn't matter how many things are on that list. It can be three pages long. We would still call it a little list, a lijstje. Uh, another thing, we've got a lot of borrowed words, words from other languages. Now, I've chosen a few randomly. Uh, the first three are from Bahasa, really. Brani, courage, uh, Berkelai, maybe I, my pronunciation is probably wrong, but Berkelai, Bakalai, like fighting, snatching. And you have to be Pinter to go to university in the Netherlands. Smart. Now we've got a lot of words from French, portemonnaie, magazine, computer from English. Uh, but there's a lot of words you might actually recognize. Right. Some things you shouldn't miss in Dutch. We like gezelligheid. Something can be gezellig uh, because there's a lot of gezelligheid. Now, I've never, and I've actually looked into this years ago, there's no word in another language that means the same. There's similar words like cozy or gemütli in German or senang maybe in Bahasa, but there's no such words as gezelligheid. We are very fond of gezelligheid, like a, a very a pleasant environment. Goedemorgen, goedemiddag. It sounds like you're being shot. You're not. This is just our way of saying good morning and good afternoon. No one is going to shoot you. There's no throat issues with all the g -g -g. It's just the way we pronounce the G. Um, same with hoe gaat het, how are you? Very basic language. And this is a funny one as well. Lekker. Now, lekker actually means tasting good. So food is lekker. But nowadays, an activity can be lekker too. So have you, it's like nicely. Have you sported nicely? Like have you studied nicely? Lekker. They can actually ask you. So if you say to someone, hoe gaat het? Someone can answer with lekker. Uh, and it's got not to do, nothing to do with taste. Right. This is just a very brief overview of Dutch, specific Dutch things in the language. Now, why learn Dutch? Why learn Dutch, Molly? Well, first of all, I think it's important for me <laughs> because I work for Netherlands Education Support Office. Mm. I have to. But the most important thing, I would say it's easy because again some words are similar and the same yeah it's not that hard it's like any other languages languages aren't super hard to learn it's just an investment of time and effort 
like anything. But the real reasons to learn Dutch are as follows. 75.2% of the international stu uh, students who study in the Netherlands at the moment find it hard to integrate and to connect or like relate with their Dutch peers. And that's, uh, that's such a pity. This comes from the annual international student survey uh, from last year, uh, 2019. Uh, and one of the quotes I found in that research is almost my entire study is with Dutch students, yet I barely speak to them. I find it very hard to become close to them. How sad. It's such a missed opportunity. They're actually quite nice, the Dutch. Another one, almost 25, and this is important as well, I should say, uh, Almost 25% of the international students who studied in the Netherlands, they still live there five years after graduation. They got hitched to like a blunt giant or giantess. They got hooked and they stayed. Um, you need to learn language because also touch is required as a strong language for the vast majority of the jobs. So um, if it comes to you and to a Dutch speaker, you are probably very interesting for a company because you speak more like various languages, you are, you've got an international mindset. However, if you don't speak the language, they will still choose your Dutch equivalent. So that's something you really should think about. If you go to the Netherlands, learn the language. It's easier to relate to your Dutch peers. It's, well, there's quite a chance that you stay stay hooked hooked really with the Netherlands that you never leave again um or well not soon so just learn a language and if you want any career perspective you need it now and to end my part of this webinar uh I would like to show the following very cheesy well-known quote but it's so true if you talk to a man in a language he understands that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart, from Mr. Nelson Mandela. Right. Um, Molly, I hand over to you, but not, I should introduce you first to this video. Molly will show us. It's a bit of a footage with Dutch street talk, uh, with the courtesy of easy languages. There you go. Over to you, Mel Molly. Thank you, Chris. Could you please stop screen sharing because I'll oh, do the yeah. same thing. <laughs> That would come handy. Oh, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Hello, goedemiddag. Hi. Goedemorgen. In het Nederlands zeg je ja, ja. En in het Nederlands zeg je nee, nee. Dit is, is heel, heel goed. goed. Ja, dat is slecht. Ik wil het. Ik wil het niet. Ik hou van het. Ik vind dat leuk. Nee, bedankt. <laughs> ja, ik snap het. Het is heel warm. Het is koud. Ik moet daarheen. Wat moeten we nou zeggen dan? Vandaag. Gisteren. <laughs> Altijd. Tot morgen. Goedenavond. Ik begrijp het niet. So sorry, excuseer mij. Spreekt u Nederlands? Begrijpt u mij? Wie ben jij? Ik ben een toerist. Spreekt u Engels? Wel te rusten. Ik kom uit Holland. Ja? Ja? Hoe gaat het met jou? Alsjeblieft. Wat is uw naam? Mijn naam is Anneke. Het is mooi weer. Het weer is niet zo mooi vandaag. There you go. So, we have watched the video and then now it's time for me to present another guest speaker, Fons van Oosterhout as the director of Erasmus Training Center in Jakarta, Indonesia. Hello, Fons. Could you please unmute the the microphone? Just unmute. Okay, could you please say something? 
Yes, can you yeah, hear me? I can hear you. There you go, Fons. The floor Great. is yours. So you can see also uh, dealing with the Dutch continued. Yes. Um, no, you haven't screen sharing. Now it's time for you to screen sharing first. Okay, let's do that. Yes, please. Yep. Yes. Reading. Almost and there. Round one, two, three. I can see very clear. The floor is very yours. Very good. Very good. <laughs> and uh, uh, great to be here. And uh, good morning to you all. Good morning to everyone, uh, all our viewers in uh, Singapore, our viewers, of course, in uh, in Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, good morning. Um, uh, Chris was mentioning uh, uh, why learn Dutch, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, if, if you ask me as a Dutchman uh, living here already uh, for eight years in Indonesia, uh, why do you learn the language uh, of a country where you live is uh, to make friends and uh, to make good friends. And Molly, I expect you soon to the ATC to make better friends uh, uh, and 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 <laughs> And, uh, uh, and and probably it will work, uh, it will help you as well in, uh, in uh, working uh, at the NASO. Okay, we're going to talk about um, the cultural side and the social side of it. Um, but before I just introduce myself, my name is Frans van Oosterhout and I lead here the Erasmus Training Center here in Jakarta. We have around 1200 students learning Dutch. We do academic preparation. And we do also a preparation uh, for uh, Indonesians, especially uh, from Bahasa to, to Dutch, uh, who wants to go uh, to the Netherlands uh, for work or even in Burging. Eh? Uh, and uh, so we are here in uh, Jakarta preparing, uh, uh, especially Indonesians, uh, to go to the Netherlands. And, the language is a very big part of that. Okay, so before I I talk about really going to the Netherlands, um, it, it is very important to know you go to Europe, yes, um, because uh, Netherlands is part of Europe, and uh, most I think probably you all know uh, Netherlands is a small country. Huh? Chris Chris showed it you, to you uh, uh, before in the northwest of Europe. Uh, we uh, on the one side we have Germany and Belgium as our neighbor countries, and the other side is the North Sea, and there is of course uh, the UK. Um, going to Europe, why is that important? Because uh, it, it is an entry gate to Europe as well, like Singapore or Jakarta is an entry gate to Southeast Asia, and uh, it's good to know uh, what are the advantages of this. Huh? Uh, you probably heard about the EU. Um, the European Union. So this is this is a, 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 is, a is, is an union where uh, economics and and and, and uh, of, of all uh, partner uh, nations uh, uh, and and also uh, political systems are uh, aligned. Um, but uh, most probably better for you to know is is we are part of the eurozone. That means. All those countries, uh, 19 out of 27 EU countries, they use the euro. So you don't have to change money all the time if you want to travel in Europe. And we are also part of the Schengen area. So that means you have no borders. Yeah. So if you see here, this is the European Union. All blue countries are current members. Yes. And uh, yeah, well, of course, uh, uh, we had Brexit. Huh? So the UK is uh, out. Um, and we have the Schengen area, so that means that that you can, if you if you enter the Netherlands, uh, so this is the small country of the Netherlands. Then you have in the south of Belgium, and here you have Germany. So if you want to travel uh, and explore uh, Europe, you can do that, and uh, you can cross borders without checking, uh, and, and there's no border control uh, in in the Schengen area. So, although the Netherlands is a beautiful, beautiful country, it's also a great opportunity being in the Netherlands to explore Europe. Uh, like, I, I have now the opportunity to explore Southeast Asia. It's, it's a bit difficult now, of course, in the COVID uh, uh, times, but uh, uh, 
most probably uh, uh, and hopefully uh, uh, those times will change. Um, so I, I, I just, you know, uh, about what is now typical Dutch and uh, and and this is a personal uh, 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 opinion and uh, and this is also from my own experience. So so being on time is a very uh, uh, important Dutch virtue. Huh? Being on time is very important. If you go, are going to study in the Netherlands, then um, yeah, the, the, the teachers and the lecturers are expecting you to be on time. Yes, and if you're not on time, uh, yeah, they can even expel you for, from classes. So uh, being on time is very important. Um, so in a happy occasion, uh, we have birthdays, of course, and it's very typical in, in, in the Netherlands. And, and every time I come back to the Netherlands and I have birthday parties uh, with family, we sit in a circle. And uh, this is a quite funny uh, experience. Huh? Uh, uh, we, we sit in a circle, we, we talk to our neighbors, uh, the men talk about cars and, and all kinds of uh, men stuff. And, 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 and the ladies talk about their interests. And uh, uh, we sit all together and nice uh, uh, and cozy. Eh? And, and uh, uh, Chris already said, we call this gezellig. Um, and uh, in the movie, eh, you just saw, um, there, were, there was also a sentence uh, uh, about the weather. Eh? Lekker weertje, eh? of there's always a talk about the weather. Because the weather in the Netherlands changes a lot. Uh, even though uh, we are a small country, we have uh, four seasons. So in Asia, you have a wet season, a rainy season, and a dry season. Uh, in the Netherlands, we have four seasons. So we have uh, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And if you go to the Netherlands, you have to dress uh, uh, accordingly. Uh, uh, in the winter, it's really, really cold. It's minus, uh, below, my, uh, below zero. It's minus degrees. So, it's, it's, so to experience that, it is... Uh, 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 it's a special, <laughs> I can tell you now, it's a special ex uh, experience uh, to be in that situation. Um, but you have to prepare yourself. Um, another typical Dutch feature is food. So is there a Dutch food culture? Yes. Uh, but we are so... Uh, uh, we are surrounded by so many multicultural layers in, in, our, in our country. Uh, our food is also multicultural. But traditionally, uh, we start our day with a breakfast, eh? ontbijt, eh? we call that. That is bread. Uh, in, in the afternoon, we eat bread. Yeah, and here you see a broodje kaas and a little bread with cheese. And here you see krentenbollen. Those are uh, little fluffy balls, uh, bread balls with uh, uh, raisins in it. And for dinner, Avondeten, we call it. We, yeah, I, I put here a picture in of, of, of Stompot. But, uh, of course, we have a lot of uh, uh, food from abroad. Eh? Uh, we have pastas. We, uh, we are used to all kinds of foods. But, uh, yeah, traditionally, we, we eat past, uh, uh, Stompot. Um, so, basically, what you see here, so we eat two cold meals. Uh, so uh, for breakfast and, and middag eten. And one, we are used to one hot meal in the evening. So in Asia, that's a, that's, that's a little bit different eh, because in the afternoon here, uh, for example, in Indonesia, you have a warm or a hot meal. Yeah. So be prepared for that. And hey, Molly, are you still there? Of course. I'm so, watching. So, so what do I see here? <laughs> Okay, that's definitely sweets. Yes, yes, you, you, you're very warm, <laughs> uh, so to say. Um, so actually, Molly, I'm, I'm going to explain this. These are beschuit met muisjes. And we eat this as at a special occasion, at the birth of, 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 of a child. So, um, so then immediately, Molly, you see uh, uh, which one is which. Huh? So the, the blue is for the? The boys. The boys, yes. And the pink for the? For me. <laughs> yes, for you. <laughs> for the girls. For the girls. <laughs> yeah, but uh, um, yeah, this is a typical Dutch treat. Huh? It is a Dutch biscuit with uh, a sugar coated anise seeds. And um, so you you come across these, these, these Dutch treats with special occasions. 
Okay. Um, society and culture. Yeah, you know, what can you tell about that? Um, we have, first of all, a very modern society uh, and a multicultural society. And like Chris also explained, we have a, a colonial past. Eh? So, so we have been uh, around in the world. And also uh, because of the European Union, uh, we have a lot of uh, people from uh, uh, the, the European Union uh, in, in our country. And of course, we are a very open country, so we accept also a lot of refugees, of course. And uh, we, we tick, tick uh, most boxes and most lists in the world if, if you talk about ha happiness indexes, um, uh, academic life. Uh, so uh, it, it's, it's a modern and multicultural society uh, as such. Freedom of speech is very important in our country. Huh? Own opinion is high is a high value. Um, English proficiency is there as well. Uh, it's the highest in the world. But if you come more to the eastern side of the country, it will be a more uh, uh, focus on Germany. But Dutch, of course, is very necessary in off-campus situations, of course. Huh? And if you want to make friends, if you go uh, do sports together, and uh, uh, and just in in the formal talks, and if you really want to have that be a chair, um, the Netherlands uh, uh, is, seems open and informal. Yes, 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 it's all true. But there's also some complex rules uh, uh, there. Huh? Flashy and showy behavior. Uh, yeah, they don't really like that. Um, equality is very important. Yeah, so everyone is equal and deserves equal rights. And uh, uh, and opportunities, of course. Eh? That that uh, that is about gender equality. Eh? That is by religious equality. Eh? That is in all these uh, uh, areas. And Dutch people like to be as normal as possible. Just a Dutch famous uh, Dutch saying is just act normal. That's crazy enough. Doe maar gewoon, dan doe je al gek genoeg. Okay. Um, greetings. What's up with the three kisses? Yeah. This this. This slide I especially made because you come across uh, uh, some so, some some situations that you think, hey, why are they doing this? Uh, what's what's going on here? But actually, we are in COVID time, so the greeting is just with the elbow. So uh, this is for you to, to read uh, later on and uh, and and just have have your mind about this. Huh? And uh, uh, women kiss women, uh, men men shake hands. Um, but uh, uh, it's better to do air kisses uh, and don't uh, put, put, put that uh, uh, really wet uh, uh, kiss there. Um, so if you want to know a little bit more about the latest about Corona in, in the Netherlands, just follow this link, please. And that also includes greetings. Yes, the greetings are now a bit different than normal. Okay. Um, academic environment and daily life as a student. I guess this is the most important huh? uh, to, to give you some tips about about this 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 topic. Um, you know, open yourself up, be brave, be proactive, and and if if you want to ask something, don't be shy, uh, be confident uh, to your peers and lectures, and learn the Dutch. Make a lot of friends. You need each other. Yes, and, and not only social, but also academically. The, the system in the Netherlands is, 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 is in such a way uh, uh, organized that you will need to have a lot of study friends. Yes, so you have to do assignments together. Be on time. We talked about that. Um, agenda appointments, very important. And uh, yeah, be aware that the shops are already closed six, uh, also on public holidays. Sometimes, uh, 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 well, in, 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 in most cases, uh, 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 it, it, it's very important to, to, to lock your bicycle. Huh? First of all, learn to ride the bicycle because that is, that is our public transportation mode, almost. Huh? And, uh, but lock it. You can put it here in, in Jakarta anywhere. It will not be stolen or anything. But uh, uh, lock it uh, is, is very important. Um, Asian shops, yes. For all Indonesian uh, viewers, Indomie is here in Blanda. Yeah, in the Netherlands, there's Indomie. No problem. But all kinds of other Asian uh, spices and, 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 and meals can be picked up in, in, in Asian shops as well. And very important tip, register as a student member because you get student discounts for almost anything in the Netherlands. So, so 
being a student being a student in the Netherlands, you're entitled to discounts. Yes. So even for 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 uh, uh, memberships at grocery stores or uh, or uh, personal care are very uh, are very much out there. So just go for those. Yeah. Find out what will suit you best and and where you can get a good discount. Okay. Um, this is the final tip, and though, this is the tip for anyone who is going to live in a student home. Um, traditionally, Friday night is, is, a, is a night out, and, and, and students like to sleep in, of course, on Saturday morning. And what will happen in most times on a Saturday, you're going to clean your house. Yes, you're going to clean your house. Uh, this is the time to clean everything. And you want to start nice and early. But you live in a, in a student house and uh, uh, that's not really appreciated as such. Um, so please uh, don't start uh, um, vacuum your whole room or your cars uh, or uh, your room in the student house very early in the morning because everyone will wake up, of course. Uh, so this is just a practical tip for you uh, to pay attention to. Okay, so this is up. I think my time is up for, for now. Yep. Um, is, is that true, Molly? Yes, that's really true because now okay. we are going to have um question and answer session. Okay, so very I'm well. Going, so could you please um stop screen sharing uh funds because I'm going to yes. change into the QA mode. Okay. But first I want to thank you all for your attention, of course. And uh, you, you will you will get this presentation later on and uh, you will see the, the the different contact details of, of all the participants here as well. Um thank you. I stop sharing. Awesome. There you go. So yeah, um, because our time is really tight for this morning, I wish we had more time. Uh, we are still waiting for the questions from the participants, but um, I do have several questions for Chris and also for Fonz. Yeah. Okay, good. So if you are ready, I think I will start from Chris. So Chris, um, you mentioned about uh, the other language is Frisian, right? Um, uh, one of your slide. Um, is there any kind of like a really different between a Dutch and also Frisian language? Or could you please give us some example as well, um, the Frisian language or maybe dialects um, that you know? Um, yeah, there's a big difference uh, in between Dutch and uh, Frisian. Uh, Frisian is actually closer related to English. If you look at the language tree, it's closer related to English than to Dutch. So hopefully they don't follow their UK friends into a uh, Frexit, a Frisian exit, and they will stay part of the Netherlands. No, they will say, still be part of the Netherlands. No, it's very different from Dutch. Um, and you can't really understand anything. If they speak uh, Frisian, it's another language. I see. Okay. Um, we do have questions now uh, from Francis. Now I will publish it. So this is from Francis. Can students work part-time while earning their degree? So whoever wants to answer it, um, please do. Yes, it's very uh, common, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is uh, that is confirmed. <laughs> they <laughs> can do that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because uh, again, another information for Francis. Um, as international student, of course, you can work. Uh, the regulation is a uh, sixteen hours per week. But if it's um, uh, during holiday, you can work full time. But please be mindful because, again, the intention to go to the Netherlands is study. So it's better to focus on your study. So don't work too much because, again, it's not easy to study in a different country as well. It's really hard to catch up. Yeah. Okay. I think I will give um, another. Uh, one more uh, question, I think for you, Fons, um, because you are more social vibe uh, on your presentation. What normally do you do during the Connie, uh, what is it, the King's Day? Oh, the King's Day. Wow. Yes. Um, that's, uh, well, <laughs> actually, uh, at the, in the King's Day, uh, the Dutch uh, people uh, get a little bit crazy, so to say. And uh, we love the, the orange color uh, at yeah. that day. And we and we celebrate uh, uh, the kingdom as as uh, as such, um, but uh, uh, yeah, it 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 was an, a, 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 uh, it's a real Dutch uh, cultural festival, you know, where we celebrate being Dutch, 
and uh, our royal family is going to uh, uh, designated areas uh, 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 to a city and then the whole city just uh, uh, presents uh, uh, themselves uh, to the royal family and uh, there are festivals throughout the Netherlands and, and you know when you say Kingston a uh, king's day uh, uh, of every uh, dutch dutch uh, inhabitant uh, there will be a smile on their face um but uh, yeah we really celebrate being dutch at that day okay well hopefully next year we we are going to have celebration when this situation is getting better okay i think this is the question for me another from francis what's the average fees in a year so basically uh for bachelor degree uh, around six thousand euros until um twelve thousand euros per year but for master's degree around twelve thousand euro until two uh, twenty thousand euros per year okay and then the very last thing questions because our time is up from delphine are there any financial aid or scholarship for international international students yes they do have but i'm not really sure with your um as uh, uh, what is it with your nationality i think for singapore normally they do have scholarship from the university but from indonesian if there is the indonesian um participants around here yes we do have uh what is it the scholarship as well so basically you can go to study in holland.nl and then check their website to see the explanation about the scholarship and also financial aid there you go because our time is up i think well i know it's really really short but i'm happy to have you um virtually guys yeah i'm, I'm also very happy to be a part of this and thank you all yeah. uh, and i hope everyone got a little bit of a glimpse of uh, uh yeah what it's like uh, uh dealing with the dutch so to say thank you fans uh, i second that <laughs> Okay, so hopefully next time I can see you all. Well, I well I always see funds basically. <laughs> We are around one complex. But for Chris, hopefully I can see you in person next time. Yeah, hopefully if borders yeah. open again. Of well, course. Well, hopefully <laughs> Great. Thanks, next, Molly. next time, next time we can talk Dutch, uh, Molly. So oh, yeah. uh, I, to learn. <laughs> I expect you here. Huh? <laughs> yes. Okay. So thank you so much for Chris and also for Fonz and to all the participants. Um, they already come to our webinar room. We'll see you again, and hopefully you can go to our website because the fair still continue. And then I'm signing off, and then we are signing off. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Thank you.